Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In my previous videos about maximum demand, I spoke about how to calculate it. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll put a link at the end of this video. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the different methods for calculating maximum demand and answer some of the questions that I've had. So what actually is the maximum demand? The maximum demand is the sum of all the connected loads. So if you make a list of all the circuits and add them all up, that is the maximum demand. So what I tend to do is I tend to calculate the design current for circuits where we know the load in watts. For circuits that we don't know the load in watts, such as a socket circuit, I would use the rating for the protected device. So if we add all of that up, even for a simple domestic installation, it adds up to quite a lot. So what we need to do is we need to work out the maximum demand after diversity. Now there are two methods of calculating diversity in the on-site guide. The first one is to use the individual diversity factors for each circuit. So for example, that could be 66% for a lighting circuit or for a cooker circuit, it could be the first 10 amps plus 30% of the remainder plus five amps if there's a socket in the cooker outlet. So the second method in the on-site guide is for simple installations installed in accordance with Appendix H of the on-site guide. And so for that method, the, the diversity factor is 100% of the largest load and 40% of the remaining loads. So there are two methods in the on-site guide for calculating diversity. So if we apply the diversity to the circuits and then add up the totals for, for all the circuits, then that is the maximum demand after diversity. And that is the figure that we use uh, when completing an electrical installation condition report or an electrical installation certificate. Another thing to bear in mind is that if there are any electric vehicle charging points or if there's a PV system at the property, there's no diversity allowable for those. So that's another thing to bear in mind that could affect the maximum demand for the installation. So another thing to bear in mind is that the amount of circuits in an installation has an effect on the maximum demand. And I've seen situations where even in very simple installations where there have been a lot of circuits installed, um, perhaps put to minimise inconvenience in the event of a fault, or perhaps because sometimes it's easier to install an additional circuit. Another thing to mention about maximum demand is that you'll notice that on electrical installation certificates and electrical installation condition reports, it gives you the option to enter the amount for maximum demand for the installation either in amps or in KVA. This makes sense because in an installation where power factor is an issue, power factor will affect the energy consumption. And so it's necessary to take this into account and then use the value for KVA. In my previous videos, I mentioned that when applying for a new electricity connection with the local DNO, that it's often necessary to give the maximum demand in KVA. And so in simple installations where the power factor isn't an issue, or if the power factor is simply not known, um, what I would do is I would calculate that in amps and then convert to KVA. You'll notice that when you convert amps to KVA, um, when, when there isn't a power factor that's known, the, the KVA comes out to the same as the kilowatts. Interestingly though, I've sometimes seen application forms that ask for the maximum demand in KVA and some that ask for it in kilowatts. Another thing to bear in mind is that if you've got electric heating or if you have got uh, renewable sources of energy, it will also be necessary to provide the demand in kilowatts for those in addition to the overall maximum demand. So the thing to bear in mind when calculating maximum demand is that there's more than one way of carrying out the calculation. There are two methods in the on-site guide. And for more information on how to carry out those calculations in accordance with the on-site guide, please see the links to the three other videos on my channel.